Hello Year 11 and welcome to our second video here for our ninth topic. We're looking at expected value today. In our last lesson we're looking at the language of probability distributions and today we're going to move into some uh, more serious calculations. I'm going to kick it off with a bit of a teaser here uh, with the scenario. Here's Maurice. Maurice is playing a game. There's a 1 in 5 chance that Maurice will win $20, a 1 in 3 chance that he would win $3, and if he doesn't do either of those things, he will win nothing. We can represent that with a probability distribution. So there are, of course, three values, $0, $3, and $20. And the probability, well, let's work backwards. $20 was 1 in 5, $3 was 1 in 3. Knowing that our probabilities add up to 1, the probability of winning nothing would be 7 over 15. Okay, so far so good. Now the question I'm going to ask, what's the maximum Maurice should pay to play this game? Hmm. Well, if he paid $20, the best he would do is get his money back. And that would only be sometimes. Right? It would not even be very often. Four out of five times we could expect Maurice to end up with less money than he started with, and one in five times he'd just get his money back. So $20 would be too much to pay to play this game. Zero dollars, well... That would seem a bit good, because there's some chance that he'll win some money. Now, we want to calculate the expected value of this experiment. Uh, we might consider that if we did this experiment very many times, right? if we played this game, let's say 100 times, 1,000 times, what would be the average return for playing that? Right, what would be the average amount we win? Now, it might not be $3 or $20 or $0. It might be something in between. That's fine, because we're averaging them out. And in fact, expected value is also referred to as the mean. So, its expected value is written like this, right, with a capital E and with a capital X inside the brackets. Right? expected value of x is written like that, but also as mean, and that's this lowercase Greek character mu, right, which is, I think, like a u with a long leading tail on the way in. So mu is the mean or the expected value. And we calculate it like this. It is the sum of the product of each value with its probability. So 0 times 7 fifteenths plus 3 times 1 third, plus 20 times 1 fifth. 0 times anything is 0. 3 times a third is 1. 20 times a fifth is 4. So we add those together. 0 plus 1 plus 4 equals $5. So this suggests that if Maurice played this game over and over and over again, he would typically win an, an average mean of $5 per game. So, if it cost him $5 to play in the long run, it'd probably come out even. Not necessarily, but probably in the long run. If it only cost him $4 to play, well, it would seem to probably be a good idea to play. Because for his $4 outlay, he can expect, typically, to get $5 back. If it cost him $6 to play, well, he could expect to be losing money every time or in the long run, to lose money playing this game. Oh yeah. Now, there is uh, another little symbol here, another Greek character. This is an uppercase sigma, looks a bit like a capital M on its side, and it means the sum. So, uh, sometimes we write the probability of our random variable being equal to the value, right? So, capital P, side of capital X equals lowercase x, but I can abbreviate that to lowercase p outside of lowercase x, right? So this, the same as the probability we looked at in the last one with the capital P and the big X. Yeah, well, that's another example of uh, different ways of writing the same thing. We're going to see that happen a lot. So this is the probability. X being the value multiplied by the probability. So do that and add all of those things together. So this times this plus this times this, plus this times this, right? And that's how we calculate the expected value. Right Here's an example. 
uh, actually just calculate the expected value from the game above. Sorry, I've jumped the gun there a little. We've talked through it already, but let's see how it goes. So uh, here we go. Those are our values. Those are our probabilities. Uh, if we add the probabilities together as a check, we get one. That's good. This is the value times the probability. Okay, so 0, 1, and 4. We add those together, we get 5. So that's our expected value, or the mean. You could be asked either of those things. Calculate the expected value of this. Calculate the mean of this. It sounds like a different question, but it's really not. Okay, mean and expected value, same thing. Uh, lowercase mu represents the mean. Okay, here's another example. If the expected value is equal to 3, calculate... Oh, it says A and B. I've got P and Q written down. Calculate P and Q. My apologies. Calculate P and Q. Now, this is a fairly uh, or a, a common enough HSE question, right? This is uh, could certainly be an exam question just like this. So, there are two things we know here. We've got two unknowns. There are two things we know. We know that the probabilities have to add up to 1. So P plus Q plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.4 must equal 1. Or, tidying that up a little, P plus Q equals 0 0.4. Also, we know the expected value equals 3. So remember, we calculate expected value as X times the probability of X. So 1 times P plus 2 times Q plus 3 times 0 0.2 plus 4 times 0.4. And we're told that's equal to 3. So when I tidy that up, I get P plus 2Q equals 0 0.8. Well, if I take this equation away from this equation, I'm left with Q equals 0 0.4. Substitute that back in here. So Q equals 0 0.4 and P equals 0. So there we go. Right, a neat sort of a question. Tests your understanding of the uh, sum of the probabilities as well as expectation, as well as, I suppose, a little bit of simultaneous equations. A la fifth example here, last example. This is a tricky one. Minerva plays a game, right? This is how this game works. Flip a coin. If it lands on heads, Minerva will win on the first time, first attempt. Minerva wins $2, right? And that's the end of the game. If it's a tail, they flip the coin again. And this time, right, the prize money doubles. So if it lands on head on the second coin, second attempt, then she'll win $4 and the game's over. If it's tails and then tails, right, but heads on the third attempt, then we double the prize money, it goes up to $8. Right, 8, then 16, and so on. Of course, as it goes along, the prize money goes up, but the probability of that occurring is, uh, is diminishing. So, what is the maximum Minerva should pay to play this game? So much like Maurice with his game before, this one is a little more complicated. These are our values, okay? So this is what could occur. We could win $2, $4, $8, $16, 32 so on. Right? There will be an infinite number of discrete values. The probability of these things occurring... Right, there's a 1 in 2 chance that it will land on heads in the first term. There's a 1 in 4 chance that we'll get a tail then a head. 1 in 8 chance, tail, tail, head. If you want to check that out, you can draw up your tree diagram and have a look at those. So we can see a pattern in the values. Right? It's an exponential function. Right, It's doubling every time. And in fact, the probabilities is also an exponential function, but exponential decay and it's halving every time. So, the value times the probability, 2 times a half is 1, and 4 times a quarter is 1, and 8 times an eighth is 1, and again, that's a fairly easy pattern to follow. So if I were to sum these up, right, because that's what the expected value is, is the sum of these figures here, I get 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, and it goes on forever. And we can see fairly clearly that that number is going to continue to rise, right? that that will approach infinity. So, strangely enough, strangely enough, we take from this that Minerva should pay any amount to play this game. If it cost $100 to play that game, 
then you should pay $100 and keep paying it and playing over and over and over again, right? Because you are likely to uh, win your money back and then some. If it cost a thousand dollars to play that game, sounds crazy, right? That there's uh, one in two chance that you're going to win two dollars and walk away, right? And be nine hundred ninety-eight dollars down. Right? There is a slim chance, a very slim chance, that you will win uh, over a thousand dollars, but nonetheless. Nonetheless, the chance is there, uh, and it cancels out all of the losses eventually. If it should cost a million dollars to play this game, it does seem very unlikely that you're likely to end up in front, uh, when there's a good chance you'll win $2, or maybe $4, or maybe $8. Right? But eventually, you will win enough. You will get enough tails in a row that you would pay off the million dollars that you spent there, as well as all of the other millions of dollars that you'd spent up until that point. Mm, challenging this problem, but nonetheless, that's how it works. So, that's it for this second exercise. Wrap these things up again. Uh, calculate the expected value, also called the mean. Right, this is what we do. We mm, multiply each value by its probability, and then we add those products, right? We sum them up. So, the mean, new here, is equal to the sum of the values multiplied by the probabilities. Righto. That's it for today. If you've got any questions, you know what to do. Ask me in class. Otherwise, our next exercise is going to be variance and standard deviation, and that will also be the end of the topic. There we go. Quick. Okay. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.